Hi there. This week I thought we'd start a little series that I'm calling Details Count. I often get questions and comments on my videos that indicate that most of you aren't spending much time reviewing your pattern after you've made your fitting alterations. So over the next few weeks, we're going to cover some of the often missed pattern refinements you need to do after you alter your pattern for fit. I'm Alexandra Morgan from In-House Patterns and In-House Pattern Studio, and this week we are talking button rules. The placement of the buttons at the center front of the garment is pretty important. When you make changes to the button size or alter the pattern's length, you really need to consider how those changes are going to affect the button placement on the finished garment. Now, in order to have a successful outcome, you're going to need a few guidelines. So let's go over those now. Okay, so I'm going to explain the all of the button rules according to the Bella blouse here. It's really a great example because I have the button placement and the button hole placement already marked on the pattern. And I wanna be able to explain exactly why I chose those positions and why they are placed the way they are. So let's take a closer look at the button position on the center front piece. Here is the front panel of the Bella blouse. And you can see here that I've marked the bust, waist, and hip position on the pattern. The bust line position isn't marked on the pattern when you get it, but I'm gonna tell you right now that the bust line is located three inches below the base of the center front neckline, and the bust point is located four inches from the center front line, which is marked here on the pattern. The waistline is indicated at the top of the tucks that we have at the waist and the hip line is approximately eight inches from the waist. So if you mark out those positions for the bust, waist and hip, it's also going to help you with your fitting. So you're going to learn in just a minute why this bust, waist and hip are important when it comes to our button placement. But first let's talk about the button size. The Bella blouse uses a button size of three eighths of an inch. The button size is important to know first because your button size indicates the size of your button extension. In other words, the button extension is the distance from the center front line to the edge of the garment, which gives the button a really nice area to sit on. You wanna make sure that the button extension is equal to the diameter of the button. The button size for the Bella blouse is 3 eighths of an inch or one centimeter, which means my button extension is also 3 eighths of an inch or one centimeter. The reason that we're going to do this is because we want the button again to be framed really nicely by the button placket. And we wanna make sure that there's enough extension beyond the edge of the button to be flattering. So one of the things that you need to consider if for some reason you can't find a 3 8 inch button or you just want to use a larger size button, let's say you want to use a half inch or 5 8 uh, 1.3 to 1.5 centimeters, you're going to need to add to the button extension. So once again, you're going to take your button size and the, your button size is going to indicate the button extension from center front. So make sure that you do decide on your button size before you cut your pattern. Okay, so now that you've planned the button size and the button extension, you can now start planning the button placement. The button placement is really rather strategic because you need a very specific first button position. You also need a very specific position for the rest of the buttons so that they address those points of tension or those points of strain that you have on the center front of the garment. So let's talk about the first button position first. So you can see here I've drawn in my seam line. So that's something that you always want to consider. The Bella blouse uses just a quarter of an inch along the facing edge here and the collar edge. So that's why it looks so small here. But this blue line is the seam line. 
So when you consider what your first button position is, you're going to consider its position from the neckline edge, or in this case, it's a collar edge or a facing edge. You're going to place the button based on its center point, so the center of the button. The position of the button at the very top of the garment is going to be half the distance of the button plus a quarter of an inch. So this little X here is located 3 16 plus a quarter of an inch extra. So this entire measurement here is going to be 7 16 So of course in metric, we have a one centimeter button. So we're going to place that button at 1.1 centimeters from the edge of the seam line here. Now the second button placement has to be strategic as well. So looking at the second button position here, you can see that it's located in and around the bust line, which is again, a point of tension. So you wanna think about where your button is always in relationship to that point of tension or point of strain on the garment. You can definitely place a button right at the bust line. That's actually a very good idea. But you also have to consider the entire button spacing that you have on the garment because you also want the button, subsequent buttons to land around the waistline and sometimes if you're working with a dress at the hip line. So you can see here with my first button placed very precisely that I need to then figure out what kind of button spacing that I want to have on my garment. And again, I want one button to be somewhere around the bust line and definitely one button somewhere around the waistline. I always say a good guideline is to place a button within a half inch of that point of tension. You can definitely place it right on the point of tension, but sometimes you're gonna find that as you figure out the equivalent spacing, that those don't always work out exactly. So I always try to place the buttons about a half inch from those tension points. Now, if you want some guideline for spacing, I can give you some ideas here. For a shirt or blouse, usually the distance between the buttons is anywhere from about two and a half to three inches. The smaller the button, the closer they will need to be to each other. So in other words, the spacing is gonna be smaller for smaller buttons. For jackets, you'll find that a spacing about three to three and a half inches will work pretty well. And for coats, four inches or more is absolutely possible. And the reason for this, you can get a larger spacing when you lose, use a larger button. So usually coats use one inch buttons or sometimes even larger. So you can then do more spacing because the button itself will hold down a larger part of the center front opening. So those are just some guidelines as to spacing that you can use for different types of garments. But in the end, what matters is what it visually looks like to you. So the last button placement also has to be a little bit strategically placed. Again, you wanna make sure the first button is placed correctly and that subsequent buttons that go along the center front are going to land at some of the tension points or with at least within a half inch of those tension points. The last tip I have for you is you wanna make sure that the last button placement isn't too close to the hemline. Visually, it's always going to look better if you have more space between the hemline and the last button than you do between the buttons. This just gives you kind of an elongated, more flattering look. So always leave more space from the last button to the hem than you have between each of the buttons. If you tried to place a button at the hip line in this case, it's going to look very, very odd sitting so close to the hem line. So I didn't worry about that. I'm just gonna place my button up here. The hip line on this blouse is not that big of a problem. If it gapes open, it's not a big issue. Okay, so this little box here actually indicates the buttonhole size. So you can see I have given you very good clues as to where the buttonholes are going to be placed. You're gonna notice that on the first buttonhole, I actually have the buttonhole placed a little bit differently than on the other buttons. And that's because I want the, the top of the buttonhole to secure 
the position of the placket underneath. So when this button is buttoned inside this button hole, it's going to secure the whole length of the placket because the button is going to secure the level of each of the plackets so they land at the same place. So you can see here that the top edge of the buttonhole is only an eighth of an inch from the center of the button. So in other words, this buttonhole is going to secure the whole center front placket so that it doesn't shift up and down. The other buttonholes can be placed so that the center of the button sits at the center of the buttonhole. The length of the buttonhole is always 1 8 of an inch or 0.3 centimeters longer than the diameter of the button. So this always gives some clearance and ease of putting the button through the buttonhole without making it too big and then have your, having your buttons kind of fall out of the buttonholes all the time. So having about a 1 8 inch extra length over the button size is going to help you uh, secure your button placket a lot better. Now, if you download the PDF document, button rules that I've created for you, you're also going to get some guidance on what horizontal buttonhole placements are supposed to be. So there are some slightly different rules for horizontal button buttonholes. So the button placements will be the same, but I have a couple of little tips on how to place horizontal buttonholes, which are things that you'd probably likely do in coats and jackets. So these are vertical buttonholes. In the PDF download, I'll have some more information for you about the horizontal buttonholes. Now, if that all seemed a little bit complicated, I've prepared a button rules download that summarizes all of the information I've covered for you today. You can refer to it whenever you need to. I'll leave a link for you below. Next week, we're walking seam lines and checking notch positions. I hope you'll tune in because I'm going to share a tip that you've probably never heard before. I'll chat with you soon. Bye for now.